Hello everyone. In this lecture, I am going to take the third part in pregnancy with Rh negative mother. So, with the previous two parts, I have discussed with the basics of aluminization and the Rh incompatibility. So, please go through with this all videos because I have given a very basic, clear, concise concept regarding the topics. So, the link of that videos are given in description box below. So, before you watch this video, please uh, just go through with this basic concept. So, you might be able to correlate with this all uh, topic clearly. So, in this part, I am going to deal that how the fetal body get affected with the antibodies that are being formed in mother's body. Okay. So, we know that once the mother gets sensitizes with the RH antigen, which is present in the fetal body. Okay. There are certain sensitizing events are there that I all listed in the second part. So, throughout pregnancy, the fetal and metal circulation is completely sep separate. Okay, uh, there is no mixing of these two blood. But once the most common example is the delivery. But once the baby get delivered, okay, and the placenta gets separated, there is a fetal maternal bleeding that allows the fetal blood to enter in the mother circulation. And that's why the mother gets sensitizes with this Rh antigen, which the fetal RBC carries. Okay, so how the fetal body get affected? This all depends on how much fetal maternal bleeding is there, how much bleeding or how much cells, fetal cells are entering in the mother circulation. More the bleeding is there, more antibodies will be formed, and more antibodies will create uh, severely hemolytic diseases in fetus okay so as the igg antibodies are being formed in the maternal circulation these antibodies as in secondary response they easily crosses the placental barrier because they are small in size and they reaches in fetal circulation so what they do in fetal circulation they bind on uh, antigen surface they bind on RBC surface where the antigens are already present. So, they bind with this uh, antigen on the fetal RBC surface and there they start affecting these cells. So, once they get attached with these all RBCs, RES that is reticular endothelial system of fetus get activated and that remove these all affected cell in the spleen and causes extra vascular hemolysis. So, the destruction of these all RBCs are not going to be happen in blood vessels. This occurs in the spleen. Okay, so that's why it is called extravascular hemolysis. So, I mentioned that how much fetal maternal bleeding happens. Depending on that amount, maternal antibodies are formed and that much enters into the fetal circulation. So, combinedly, according to the amount of antibodies, which are being formed and enter in the fetal circulation, they causes certain hemolytic diseases in fetus and newborn. Okay, so previously it is to be termed as erythroblastosis fetalis. Okay, so these hemolytic diseases, uh, which can be uh, mild or it can be in moderate or severe form, but these all depends on the number of antibodies that enter in the fetal circulation. Okay, so let's see. Uh, what all hemolytic diseases are there. So, the three main hemolytic diseases are there uh, that shows that the RBC get destructed by these all antibodies are the congenital anemia, icterus gravis neonatrum and the hydrox fetalis. So, here the mildest form of hemolytic disease is the congenital anemia, but that to be happen in the newborn life. Because once the fetus get delivered out, the antibodies that already remain in the fetal body, uh, that they start destructing the RBC slowly. So, the progression of disease is also taken place very slowly. It will not show abruptly. Okay. So, the symptoms appear gradually within the few weeks of life. But once the antibodies are no more is there, because the antibodies that remain in the body, they already destructed the RBCs. And now there is no placenta who delivers more antibodies toward the newborn. So as they no more be there, they won't be worse in the condition. So that's why the fetus or the newborn won't be show any feature of jaundice. 
just the features of anemia is present in newborn and that appears very gradually and sometimes the liver is also get enlarged to meet the demand of these destroys, destroyed RBCs. Okay? So this is the mildest form that is the congenital anemia in newborn. Now the moderate form of the hemolytic disease, the second one is the ictrus gravis neonatrum. Ictrus means jaundice, gravis means related to pregnancy and neonatrum means it is related to the state of newborn. Okay? In the fetal life itself what happened? There are more antibodies that uh, crosses the placenta and enter in the fetal circulation and they destroy these all RBCs. But uh, as the RBC get destructed, they form bilirubin. But these all bilirubin which is being formed in the fetal body, uh, some of it releases in the amniotic fluid by means of lungs and skin and majorly of this bilirubin, the waste is exchanged with the maternal circulation via the placenta. So we know the placenta is the barrier that allows the exchange of waste and nutrient in between the fetus and mother. So here the waste is the bilirubin. The unconjugated bilirubin is being passed uh, in the maternal circulation and that won't affect the fetal uh, fetus in the fetal life itself. Okay, this, this get eliminated through this placenta. Okay, the bilirubin get eliminated and the fetus won't have any bad effect. But once the delivery took place, once the baby get out and the placenta get separated, the placenta is no more be there to exchange this waste with the mother. So thereby that destructed RBCs uh, which forms more and more bilirubin, this bilirubin won't be able to pass and these all remain in the fetal body itself and thereby the bilirubin level remain high in the fetal body and that may cause the feature of jaundice. Sometimes this condition is too severe that the bilirubin which is being formed uh, crosses the blood brain barrier and deposited it in the brain cells and shows the features of kernectris, okay, and thereby destroys the brain cells as well. So this is the moderate type of hemolytic disease where the newborn shows the feature of jaundice and this is to be appear within 24 hours after the delivery okay now the third most severe form of hemolytic disease is called hydrops vitalis so here what happened it is appear when there is a major degree of fetal maternal hemorrhage took place where more blood enters into, into the maternal circulation and where the mother also forms more antibodies that crosses the placenta and destroys major RBCs in the fetus. So when the more destruction of RBCs is going to be take place, the fetus shows the features of anemia. So to compensate this loss, the RBC loss, the liver function more and more and it starts synthesizing more immature RBCs that further destroys uh, in same manner. So the immature RBCs are the erythroblast. Okay. So here the liver function is increases, they, they start forming the more RBCs that is erythropoiesis. So they are so busy in forming RBCs to compensate the loss that they are not forming adequate amount of protein which requires in blood, especially the albumin. So thereby the protein count is decreases and that shows the hypoproteinemia and as the protein count is decreases the pressure which is exerted by these all colloidal protein that is uh, albumin is no more be there and that's why there is a decrease colloidal oncotic pressure and thereby once, once the pressure decreases in the blood vessels the fluid the fluid which is present in blood leaks out through the spaces and collect in the cavities. So because of the excessive production of RBCs by the liver, the liver get enlarged, that is a hepatomegaly as well as the spleen is also destroying more and more RBCs. So there is a splenomegaly as well. So thereby it shows certain features of fluid collection in the cavities like ascites, pleural effusion, 
pericardial effusion. So ascites is the collection of fluid in the abdominal cavity. Pleural effusion means collection of fluid in the pleural spaces outside the lung and in between the chest. And uh, pericardial effusion that is outside the heart. Okay, so all around these major vital organs, the fluid get collected because of hypoproteinemia. As the liver is functioning uh, more and more, but it is not synthesizing the protein as it is required. Okay, and along with that, the placenta also get enlarged to meet the demand of the fetus. So it receives more and more oxygen. So to supply the vital organ, so thereby its size is also increases and side by side the heart is also pumping more and more to meet the demand of the body to supply more oxygen the heart pumps vigorously and thereby sometimes the fetus may have the features of stillborn the baby may be died soon or later because of the cardiac failure as the heart pumps vigorously okay to meet the demand of whole body so there are certain features that we can evident in sonography like the placentomegaly we can see, the uh, hepatomegaly, splenomegaly we can see and along with that the fluid which is collected in the various spaces can be visualized in sonography. The ascites, pleural effusion, pericardial effusion or even though sometimes the fluid can be collected around the scalp. So when the fluid collected around the scalp it shows a bright light in appear which shows the halo around the scalp and it is to be termed as Buddha's position. So the fluid which is collected around the scalp is to be termed as Buddha position. So these all features we can evident through sonography and this all feature shows that the fetus has anemia and uh, the RBCs are badly disrupted that's why the fetus shows the symptom of high drops fetalis. So here in this lecture we have discussed with the certain hemolytic diseases and this all depends on the degree of RBC destruction and in next fourth part we will going to discuss its management. Thank you.